In this session, you're going to be looking at how uh, flooding is affected by various different factors. Okay, so you can see a, you can see a flood there and how, how devastating that is. Okay, but you could start with this uh, Quizlet set, just revision of uh, hydrograph key key features. So you might want to you might want to start with that. Um, and I guess the objectives um, are to know what a hydrograph is and then understand what different factors can affect the shape of the the hydrograph. So really, you're looking here at physical factors or the natural factors like precipitation, geology, that's the rock type, and the relief, and then the human factors, which centers around land use. You can watch that video to work out why, why we get flooded. That's a bit of recap. Over the okay, and then you can get into your factors. So uh, 2012 was a particularly bad year. Um, in the city where I live, Newcastle, uh, we, had a, we had a major flooding event in, in the June called Thunder Thursday. And you can see there the year um, started with less than normal rainfall across the whole of the UK. And then as we moved on through the year, we had some abnormally high rainfall right the way through from April all the way through to, to December. In some regions like the, the south of England, if you look at the green bars, um, suffered really much, much heavier than normal rainfall. OK, so the, the key thing there is that that resulted in, in floods right across the south of England, right across, across through South Yorkshire and, uh, and Hull. OK, so there's some particularly bad floods in in 2012. OK, so the background factors to that, <clears throat> the physical factors are tied in with how the drainage basin works as a system. So obviously the main input to the system is precipitation and that varies. Sometimes we get light rainfall, sometimes we get very heavy rainfall. Uh, the duration of rainfall can can vary as well from very short periods to very long periods. Um, some of our precipitation falls as snow and ice and that stays on the ground. So that can have an impact on, on our rivers. From trees um, and vegetation that intercepts the intercepts the water coming down. So trees, uh, deciduous trees will intercept a lot of rainfall that they might lose their leaves in. In winter, so that will intercept less. Um, grasses and things intercept even less. So that's your interception. And from there, some of that water might get stored on the surface as ponds and puddles. Some will be evaporated and transpirated, and those levels will vary due to temperature differences. And some of that water will be turned into surface runoff or overland flow. So that'll become small, uh, small streams that flow into main, main rivers. From there, water might infiltrate down into the soil if it's permeable, and that means will it let water into it to become soil moisture. Some of that soil moisture might percolate down into the rock, okay, and saturate the rock like we can see here. The water table represents the upper level, okay, and again, that will depend on whether the rock has pore spaces in it and is permeable to allow that water in. Some will flow through the soil down to a river, and some groundwater will flow down and into into the river as well okay so that's how the drainage basin works as a system obviously all of these things are variable depending on the types of trees the types of rock the type of soil those are all natural factors okay and then the last thing to say there is we might get some evaporation off the river and off surface ponds and so on depending upon the temperature the physical factors that affect flooding um, include precipitation let's go a little quick clip here you see the very heavy precipitation causing massive overland flow. Okay, you can see overland flow running right down that's Northumberland Street in, in Newcastle. Okay, so long steady prolonged rainfall produce rivers which rise slowly but can flood, whilst heavy short showers can cause rivers to rise quickly and burst their banks. Snowfall um, can cause really high river levels if it melts very, very quickly. Um, after being stored for a period of time okay and then on relief that's the shape of the land steep slopes like these okay would uh, reduce the uh, in infiltration and you get more overland flow so limited infiltration more overland flow so your river level will will rise up okay gentle slopes like on the second diagram allow more water to infiltrate Okay, so the arrow's bigger, you get less overland flow, so your river level doesn't increase as, as much. Okay, so that's two physical factors. The next one's vegetation. Okay, forests intercept more than, more than grasses. Okay, the leaves will intercept rainfall. Um, 
and hold them on there uh, then it will drip off the leaves to the ground as through fall and then we might get stem flow so some water might flow down the stem of the tree the other thing that trees do is break up the soil and the rock so that allows more water to infiltrate in you might get afforestation that's a human factor uh, planting trees that reduces peak discharge and reduces the risk of a flood and as i mentioned earlier the other main physical factor is geology impermeable soils and rocks don't allow water to infiltrate and that increases surface runoff that reduces lag time and increases the flood risk permeable rocks allow water to infiltrate into them uh, that reduces um, flood risk okay on your human factors you've got three if you think about your urban areas there's an urban drainage basin straightened rivers um, and canalized those can increase flooding we have housing and other buildings which have gutter ins and roofs storm drains under track under the ground all of those are designed to get water away from housing and into rivers so those can increase discharges we have tarmac surfaces and concrete concrete surfaces we have paved driveways Okay, again, all impermeable, all designed to get water away from the from the from the town or the urban area. Farming can increase the risk of flooding as well, as we deforest areas to put that farming in. Um, so that increases um, flood risk because we've got less interception. In terms of your tasks, you should produce a mind map like this. It's on the worksheet. Okay, so each one needs a line going off with an explanation of how those things can affect the discharge levels if you do get that done think about hydrograph shape and you could add those to your mind map okay so high amounts of rainfall high peak discharge and chance of a flood low amounts of rainfall lower peak discharge so what would that do to the shape well if it's low rainfall your hydrograph would look like this if it's high rainfall you'll have a much higher peak and a shorter lag time okay just to review all of that uh, you could do this mind map uh, the, sorry this concept map so the idea there is you might think about how two things link together so here i've got amount of precipitation going to discharges heavy rainfall can result in very high discharges light rainfall only results in low discharges so the key thing is once you've got your lines on um, you would add on what the reason is for how those two things are connected together we'll just finish up with a little dad joke why didn't the hipster swim in the river because it was too mainstream enjoy your lesson <laughs>